You're welcome back. Um, uh, we're going to have a second guest now. I, uh, you know, I remember that I said first guest. Well, uh, Mr. Ezekiel Etanyok was actually our first guest. But our first uh, hot topic today, we'll be looking at um, uh, the challenges or, or the Nasima uh, having challenged Tinubu on SMEs and private sector driven economy. That's what we'll be looking at now. So we're glad to be joined by Mr. Frank Elanya, a technology and media news editor at Business Day. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Elanya. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure being on the show. Okay. Uh, the Nigerian Association of Chambers of Commons, Industry, Mines and Agriculture, and ASIMA, as we're calling them, uh, have urged, urged the President Bola Tinubu led government to tackle challenges that small and medium enterprises, uh, SMEs, encounter in the country. And some of these challenges that they uh, mentioned are um, uh, poor power supply, uh, multiple taxation, infrastructure, poor infrastructure, forex, uh, availability, and, and diesel uh, availability, and all that. So, I um, would like to would like to hear your thoughts. Nasima have mentioned these as the problems that they that sector faces. Let's get your comments on how right they were, or are there things that they are leaving out? Yeah, they are absolutely spot on. Um, I, I believe one of the things that they are referring to is the fiscal policy measures of uh, 2023, um, which have uh, added more taxes on top of uh, what the industry is currently facing. Um, don't forget that um, the industry, according to the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, uh, suffered a decline of about uh, 2%, uh, 38, uh, 2.8%. Um, thereabout, and uh, that's a decline from actually last year, which uh, um, was at uh, three three percent. Um, the industry also is currently facing, um, like everyone else, is currently facing um, inflation, which is at uh, twenty two point twenty two percent. It is not easy. Um, there was a report uh, that Business Day wrote about uh, that came out in today's uh, paper, which uh, looked at the fact that. Um, on uh, um, unsold unsold uh, um, products, um, the number of unsold products have actually risen. Um, why is that? Is because um, consumers are pressured. They they are facing a lot of pressures. They don't have the the amount of money they have to buy goods are getting thinner and thinner every day. Um, no thanks to the inflation, um, which I mentioned earlier is at 22.22%. Uh, uh, um, it doesn't help anybody that you go and pile up more pressures by adding more taxes to the manufacturing sector. Um, if you want the economy to grow, what you need is an economy that is productive. And where is the engine room for production is the manufacturing sector. If you um, what you need to do right now is to find measures by which you reduce some of those pressures. Um, I think the idea of adding more taxes is absolutely um, a bad idea at this time. Um, don't also forget that we are also facing um, the removal of subsidy, which also means that uh, consumers are buying uh, their products at, uh, at a ridiculously high, high rate now because of the pump price um, that... Um, retailers have to add to whatever it is that they are selling, you know. So if, if you put all of that together, what that means is that in the next quarter, we're going to see um, more unsold products on the shelves of the manufacturing uh, of manufacturers, and it doesn't look good. What we need to do now is how do we reduce that pressure on manufacturers? So um, if we're going to help them, if, if they're importing things into this country, all those excise duties that uh, the government is always uh, um, excited about, you know, collecting. Maybe we need to think about how, how do we relax some of those. Um, how do we relax some of those excise duties? How do we relax some of the taxes um, that they are facing from maybe the state and also um, the local governments? You know, so it is 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 everywhere, and it needs to be addressed immediately. The economy needs to start growing and it needs to get back to the point of uh, 
of uh, um, to the point where we're creating employment. You know, so at this point, you don't expect any manufacturer, you know, to um, uh, um, to create more businesses or to um, create more jobs, you know. But then the new president has said that he plans to create one million jobs, for instance, from the ICT sector. How do you do that when you're also piling more pressure um, uh, in the form of taxes on the ICT players? You know, so some of those things are what needs to be considered. And Nasima is actually very, very important when they say that the government needs to re review its approach to taxes. We said before that there, there is a need for harmonization of taxes. There is a need for a review of some of the taxes that doesn't make any sense. You know, some of them are actually duplicates. Um, the state government con um, collects, the, the, the local government comes for its own. You know, so all of that piles pressure on the productivity of the manufacturing sector. So I, I, I think it's high time that we look at this and say, um, how do we get these people back to their um, to to their plant, how do we get them back to to producing stuff again? We need to become a productive country one more time. Uh, as of today, we know that um, tax or the, the the story in the newspapers is that tax to GDP has risen to ten point eight six percent. Now, explain to us what the implication of that is. So what that means is that um, in, unemployment is not going to reduce, okay? Um, like I said before, who pays the taxes? One, uh, let's, ask, let's ask ourselves, who pays the taxes? You, for every item that you tax, the manufacturers, yes, you collect it from their bank accounts, yes, but then they place that money on the goods that they produce which the consumers will eventually pay for. So um, what, that's, what that means is that if consumers currently are pressured and they're not buying what is already being made, how sure are we that they're going to buy the ones when we increase the taxes? You know, so that's what we are facing, you know. Um, for, for the manufacturing sector, it's, it is critical that we start thinking about how do we incentivize that sector? How do we incentivize the players? How do we make them more productive? It's, it can't continue the way we think, it, uh, um, the way the government is, is going about it. There's something I, I read um, just a while ago from the PwC, um, which says that some of these increases that the government is making is actually inconsistent with um, um, the fiscal policy that is signed over 2022 to 2024, um, where it pledged that it wasn't going to um, increase more taxes um, on the sector. So it's important that we stick to that. that. There needs to be some consistency. There needs to be some measure of a commitment that says that we see what you're facing and we want to help you get out of it. We want to make you um the engine room of this economy we have seen that oil and gas sector isn't quite playing the role that um we expected it to play in years past you know um it, it is dropping um currently contributing about six percent um between six percent to seven percent to the gdp what we have now is to rely on our non-oil sectors make them productive make even the service sectors, you know, needs to be encouraged. The telecom sectors need to be encouraged. Every sector that is non-oil actually needs to be encouraged right now if we're going to move the economy forward. Already, what we are facing is that um, um, inflation has, has declined for four consecutive times, which means we are inching closer to another recession. If we don't address these issues about productivity, then... There's no way we're going to avoid it. Um, the government needs to start looking at um, how do you incentivize these, in, uh, these industries? How do you make them productive one more time? And uh, which is also one of the concerns I have when the, uh, when the president came out and just um, literally just announced the removal of subsidy without announcing what, what the cushion are, 
what are the palliatives that you're putting in place to help people um, go through the phase that you're asking them to go through. Also today on, on a business that we were talking about, um, if you're going to ask people to make sacrifices, you too have to make sacrifices. So we are waiting for this government to do something about the cost of governance. How do you, uh, how do you want to run the government? It needs, we, we need to know about it. And that needs to be, we need to start seeing that some of the expenses that the government run that are unnecessary are being cut. For instance, why don't we sell off, you know, some of those um, 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 aircraft that the government has, about nine of them, you know? So some of those things, the government also needs to start making sacrifices on its own. If you're asking people to make sacrifices, then you too have to start making sacrifices. That is what the manufacturing sector is looking for. Make some sacrifices and also give them some, some incentive. Let them know that you care. The CBN, the other time, you know, started this program where they were giving a uh, hundred naira for every one dollar that uh, a manufacturer brings into the country. And I said to someone, look, it is not going to do anything. It is not going to move the needle, you know, because you haven't addressed the fundamental issues that the manufacturers are, are facing. You can't just, um, because you're giving somebody hundred naira for one dollar, it isn't going to be enough motivation for him to go back to the plant. There needs to be um, um, it, um, some commitment to show that you are addressing issues around electricity, you are addressing issues around infrastructure, you are addressing issues ar around uh, health, around education, because they need talent. So those are the things that need to be addressed before we start seeing things moving to, the, um, to where we want them to move to. You talked about encouraging, uh, encouraging um, the SMEs. Uh, the encouragement could come in two ways, or, or one of two ways. Maybe giving the incentives you've talked about by way of loans, soft loans and all that, or, yes. or removing the tax. But both of them cannot go together because the government still needs to make some money and all that. In your opinion, which of the incentives will be better for the manufacturers and any other uh, any other person or any other organization under the SMEs that you're thinking about? What kind of incentive or sacrifice do you think uh, should, be, should be the first that will be given to SMEs to make them grow? I, I would think uh, tax incentives will be the first for you to present to them because uh, um, if we're looking at loans right now, loans are not very, um, they're not very attractive. Look at the rates. Digit, um, yeah. the, 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 the MPC have uh, recently increased the rates, and that's like um, too high. If you're going to a bank right now to go and collect loans for your business, you know what it is. Um, it, 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 it probably would have increased maybe to 20, from 25% to um, or more. And then if you maybe leave the banks and you want to go to digital lenders to go and collect that money, you probably will get it even um, much higher. So loans are not looking very attractive um, at the moment, um, even though banks are willing to give right now because when you have higher interest rates, um, it means that banks get to make more money. But the, those who are going to collect it will start thinking about their books. Um, how do I pay back if I collect um, a loan at this percentage? You know. So I think for small businesses right now, what they will be looking at is if you can reduce some of the taxes perhaps because there's a lot there's a lot of taxes that they are paying you know um for instance look at the uh, telecom sector um the telecom sector pays about over 40 um taxes 40 different taxes over 40 different taxes and you look at uh, how how effective are these uh, are these um numbers how how do they impact the books of the telecom sector? It is a lot for them. You know, if you're not an MTN, if you're not an Airtel, you probably are down on your knees every day trying to make ends meet. Now, think about an SME that is paying maybe about 10 taxes or a, um, every day. It, it, is, it, it is a lot. And, and then add, add, add that to the fact that they also have to provide their own electricity. Add that to the fact that they also have to provide every other thing they have to provide a, a um, health care for themselves that will provide every um social amenities because right now government isn't providing much for for many people you know so i think it's time 
that we start thinking about how do we taxes for me um, remains number one, not loans. Um, maybe in time, when the economy starts uh, um, getting better, the loan, the the interest rate will reduce, and then the market can come back, you know, to to make the demands for loans. But right now, loans are not very attractive. So taxes for me will be where to start from. Okay. Um, the uh, Commons and Industry Correspondents Association of Nigeria's chairman said that even though the government said the <clears throat> inflation rate is uh, slightly above 20%, that is just official. But the real uh, issue is that the inflation is above 40%. Are you also yeah. thinking the same way? Actually, um, KPMG had, uh, had an estimation like that, um, that he... The inflation has gone even higher than what is being stated, you know, and there is there is some sense in that. If you go on the street, you'll find that um, the cost of many um, items have gone up. OK, um, food, for instance, have have skyrocketed and it will even be higher if we also impute the current realities where people are having to buy people are having to buy um, petrol at uh, 600 naira to 700 naira from from about 185 naira you know so if if we're going to calculate what the inflation rate is going to be in the next few months or even quarter we're going to find that the inflation rate is going to be a lot higher than it is and again this is pressure this is this is just on the people because at the end of the day it is the people that bear the brunt of all of these inflation happening so what do we do to bring palliatives what do we do to help people survive this period because um some people have said okay it's going to pass away i don't i don't actually think it's going to go away you know i i think unless the unless we get back to the point of production where we are producing what we are eating where the exports trade is on balance with is is at par with import trade then i, I don't think um, um inflation is going to come down um it will only come down if if we increase um production but it is up to the government we are waiting for them to see what they're going to do first of all who are they going to appoint because the quality of the team that they have will determine the extent of productivity we're going to have Mm. Okay, let's take a final one now. Um, uh, one of the other things that uh, uh, the Nasima talked about is private sector-driven economy. We have seen that a lot of people say government has no business doing business, even though we have also seen that somewhere in China, uh, China is doing well, even when the government or the state controls a, a lot of things. So how far can the, the economy be left in the hands of private uh, entrepreneurs uh, to drive the economy? How far can they leave? The uh, private partnership is good. L running a private sector-driven economy is good. But how far can the government hands off to make the economy, to put the economy in the hands of the private individuals and make it work? I, I, I think that if if we're going to use what happens in China and maybe compare to Nigeria, we we'll probably not um, get the best picture because um, what applies in, a, in, in one country may not apply in another one, and Nigeria is a very big example on that. Um, Saudi Arabia, for instance, um, have, have run have a, a state, a state uh, company that runs their oil sector, and we've seen how Aramco has successfully um, positioned the Saudi economy on oil, and they have made a lot of progress on that. Um, but in our case, the, the reverse has been um, the case. Um, we have seen um, ev with evidence that the Nigerian government, whether it's from Abbasanjo, whether it's from, uh, from Abbasanjo to Yaradua to Good Luck Jonathan, to Buhari and even to, uh, I'm not sure it's going to be different with the current government. So that's why the sentiment is, let the government focus on making policies. 
on creating the right environment for businesses to thrive and leave private sector to do business the way it's supposed to be done. We have seen evidence with the way the refineries were run. Okay, we have four refineries and every year we make budgets that we tell ourselves we want to refurbish, we want to um, rehabilitate, whatever um, synonym they want to choose in a particular year. But at the end of the day, um, we don't see any results from that, from the projections. Um, currently, they said that the uh, Port Harcourt refinery is, uh, is near completion. We, we wait to see what, what they have done. You know, if it, if it comes mainstream, that would be nice. But I will still insist that if you want it to run efficiently, give it to a private sector player to run it. A government, for me, in Nigeria, does not have any business running, uh, running any business. All they should just focus on is make the right policies, bring think tanks, bring the right people, create the right structures, create the right teams, and create the right environment, then businesses will thrive, even, even up to building roads. If you create the right environment, you will find that you, you will find private sector players that will come and tell you, look, we want to help you build this road, but then this is how, these are the preconditions, and you can negotiate it, and you, you, don't, you don't even need to build the roads with your money. You can supervise it, you can, you can be there, you know, just like we're doing, uh, um, say, with uh, Dangote Refinery, he's building the refinery, and we have a 20% stake from it. So whatever he's going to make, whatever profit he is going to make, our 20% um, stake guarantees that we make money as well. So that should be the way forward of running business in Nigeria. If your government stick to your job of just creating the policies, allow private sector to do what they're supposed to do. So I, I, I think it's actually very important. Um, with the new government, it, it is the same thing. Don't try to be the minister of petroleum when you are the president. Bring somebody who can run the industry and who knows how to hands off and just make the policies so that the industry can thrive. Don't try to be the minister of petroleum. It's a disaster waiting to happen. So I'm expecting that this current um, administration has learned its lessons and is going to make the right um, amends. Um, so it is, is, is everyone's expectations, actually. Well, uh, that's a good way to, a good place to land and uh, wrap up this segment. I'd like to thank you, Frank, for coming on the show and giving us your perspective to what is happening and lending a voice to what Nasima said. Thank you so much for being a part of our program. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, we'll be Frank uh, Eleanya there on the program today. Frank Eleanya is a, a technology and media news editor at Business Day. He's been talking with us on uh, what Nasima said, the challenge Tinubu on SMEs and private sector-driven economy. We do hope that our economy will grow in leaps and bounds, and then the fear that is in every heart of a Nigerian uh, will no longer be there. Good luck to the present administration. Okay, we'll take a break now. When we return, we'll be talking to our third guest. Stay with us.